Hello Internet, it's Alex on Fight Games, back again, and today I want to do a video that's a little bit autobiographical, maybe a little bit self-indulgent, but I recently turned 41 years old, and today I want to talk about 41 different fighting games that I've loved in my lifetime, and obviously, uh, you know, that's a lot of, I've been playing fighting games for a lot of years, um, and I don't intend to stop, I want to keep doing it uh, as long as I'm around. Um, but here's 41 that I have loved. They're not in any particular order, but they're categorized a little bit. So let me let me show you 41 fighting games that I've loved. Uh, so, you know, I've been going to fighting game events. I love fighting games. Uh, here's me with uh, Reggie and Wooly. Uh, hooray! Get into fighting games. So, first category, Tekken. I've played Tekken for a long time. I've been playing, you know, since the 90s. Uh, I loved Tekken on, uh, basically as soon as I ran into it. Interestingly, I didn't, I, I don't remember if I played Tekken 1 or 2 uh, early on. I was aware that they existed, but the game that I really, uh, love Tekken, right? Love Tekken. Here's me with uh, Harada and Michael Murray. Um, they're signing my arcade stick. The game I really got into uh, first in Tekken was Tekken 3. Um, this game was just so magical at the time. Uh, it, it It's hard to explain like how exciting it was to see the, like these 3D models that were like clearly motion captured and they were doing really interesting martial arts. Um, we just played the heck out of this on the PlayStation 1, uh, my friends in high school uh, and I at the time. Uh, I, shout outs to my friend uh, Mark. I, I, Mark and I played this so much. Um, we got so excited about it, and you know, a, a lot of people in the school were playing this, and um, we played it on the arcade cabinets when we could. But you know, for the most part, we played it uh, on the PlayStation One. I'm sure our local meadow was was ridiculously, you know, untutored. We had no idea what high level play looked like. Um, we were like very sure that like the the end game, you know, the end evolution of the meta would look like Nina chain throws, you know? Uh, but man, Tekken 3, it was, it was magical. This got us into Capoeira, uh, in real life. We actually started, um, we found Capoeira lessons, uh, as a result of Tekken 3. Um, this was so just like foundational to us. We played this so much. Um, man, Tekken 3. It's hard, it's hard to overstate how magical it seemed at the time. It was, it was incredible. Um, yeah, I still play it here and again. Um, it's a great game. Uh, Tekken Tag Tournament. Uh, for me, this was like an extension of Tekken 3 uh, at the time. Like, you know, so it came out in 1999 and um, there was no home release until the PlayStation 2 came out. And we didn't have PlayStation 2s uh, when I was in high school. Uh, but, you know, NorCal Tekken people, like, so, you know, to this day, um, older Tekken heads, you know, still play Tag 1 for fun. Um, so this screenshot here is um, uh, from an event that was called the Sharkade. There was a space, the Sharkade, uh, here in NorCal. And um, people were playing it on the big projector. Um, you know, shout outs to the Sharkade, shout outs to Nico. Uh, Man, so like, Tag One, it's a beautiful game. I I remember we played it a lot when I was uh, at university. Uh, we got a PlayStation 2 so we could play it, um, play the home release, but it's it's magical on a cabinet. It's magical on PlayStation 2. PlayStation 3 release is really good, the HD remix. Um, this is the HD version, um, probably running on a PlayStation 3 uh, in this shot. Tag One, it's a beautiful game. It's so good. <sighs> okay, um, Tekken 5. I, I love Tekken 5. This is 5.0 here that we're looking at. Um, this particular version, this particular cabinet uh, is at a barcade in my hometown. Um, so when I go to see my parents, you know, I try to try to get some matches in on this um, on this cabinet at the barcade. Uh, but the place I played this primarily in my life, I played it on the PlayStation 2, um, mostly when I was a master's student. Uh, this came out, like, 
towards the end of my undergraduate time, um, I wasn't like super competitive at the time. Like I wasn't like, you know, part of the like broader FGC when Tekken 5 came out, but I remember playing this a lot with my friends um, uh, when I was in university and doing my masters. And I particularly remember playing this with my friend Martin. So shout out to my friend Martin. Uh, if you see this, uh, let's play some Tekken 5. That was, that was really good times. I remember that. Uh, man, yeah, Tekken 5. And then Dark Resurrection, right, is the update to Tekken 5. I've played this, um, you know, more as like a, a more mature fighting game player. Uh, I played this version significantly more. I think this is broadly considered a much better version of Tekken 5 than Tekken 5.0. Um, this is more competitively interesting. It's better balanced. Um, here's me playing you know, a match on DR. This is the PlayStation 3 version. Um, the game where I started, so like in Tekken 5, I was starting to get, uh, you know, kind of a little bit more tutored as a Tekken player. Uh, before I kind of didn't, I had some sense about what I was doing, but in like Tekken 5 into Tekken 6, I started playing, you know, much more intentionally, started like looking things up and like trying to understand like, you know, what good play looked like. Um, Tekken 6 on the PS3 was was pretty formative for me. You know, I played kind of a lot of this. This is a, this is a beautiful game. Uh, unfortunately, Mishimas aren't very good in Tekken 6, especially not Kazuya. But uh, that didn't stop me, right? You know, got to play your main character. So here's me playing a little bit of Tekken 6. This was years later. Um, I think this is in 2018, me playing Tekken 6. Uh, you could still get matches at that time. I, maybe you still can, I don't know. But it's a great game. You know, scenario campaign's kind of fun. Uh, Tekken 6. Tag 2. Tag 2 is so important to me personally. This is, this is the one where I started, like, going to tournaments. This is the game where I kind of became a member of the FGC as such, you know. Uh, I would travel to tournaments for Tag 2. Um, I was going to locals. Like, I would, I got on planes to go places to play Tag 2. Um, this is, this was like, you know, my game where I started becoming like a real competitor. Uh, in this game. I actually, I, I, I have won a Tag 2 tournament. Uh, it was tiny, but I won it. And it was in Indianapolis. And, uh, man, yeah. Uh, I was not very good, you know? <laughs> but, like, it was a small tournament, and there was a small turnout, and, uh, and I won it. Um, here's, you know, Kazuya dressed up as me, and, um, June dressed up as my um, lovely wife, who's a you know real person who looks, you know we look kind of like that if we were, um, you know, Japanese and incredibly buff. Tag two, it's like I love tag two so deeply, uh, in part just because like there's like the storytelling, uh, like for the Tekken series, it's like a love letter to people who love Tekken in Tag 2. There's like so many like beautiful little character interactions and Easter eggs and um, it's it's wonderful, you know? Like in just like the intros and the um, uh, the like wind poses, like characters have like little interactions built into it. And the customization is really fun. You can dress up characters to look like, you know, different superheroes or yourself or uh, Tag 2. Tag 2. It's really fun. I want them to re-release this one especially. I wish they would release this on PC. Okay, getting into Tekken 7. This is the big one, right? Tekken 7. This is the game I've done the most with competitively, and I've, the, I've done the best at uh, Tekken 7. Although I was actually there. I, I for completely... This was just like a stroke of like magical, miraculous luck. I happened to be in Japan for work the week when Tekken 7 released like general availability in arcades. 
I didn't. I wasn't there for like you know early beta tests or whatever. But like for like the general release of Tekken Seven, I actually got to play Tekken Seven in twenty fifteen, like early twenty fifteen in Japan, um, and that was really really special. I went out to the arcade after work, um, and I got to play it. Like I've just had like so much, um, like Tekken Seven. Uh, and um, I, I've just done like so many tournaments for Tekken 7, um, still playing it, you know, to this day. Um, it's not that long, right? It's only eight years ago that it came out. Um, it's a fantastic game, right? You know, I went to Evo like several times for Tekken 7. I went to Combo Breaker for Tekken 7. Um, this shot here, this is the farthest I ever got at Evo. Um, this is me... At this moment, I was, I'm the, I'm the Kazuya, obviously, and I'm, I'm lifting Horong. And uh, this was when I got, I was five and one at Evo at this point. Uh, this is, I got out of pools. This was, I you know, I, I escaped from Friday. And then, like, I'm in the second stage of competition on the Saturday, and I won my first match in the second stage. I was, I got out of pools at four and one, and then here I was five and one because I beat the Horong. And, uh... Man, this this was like such a magical. This was in 2019, uh, magical magical weekend, um, and uh, I actually asked like Horong players that I knew. I scouted the guy, I knew who I was gonna fight, and I scouted him. And I asked like acquaint friends and acquaintances who were Horong players. I was like, hey, help me work this matchup, and they did. And I had like, I was like so ready to fight this Horong, and I got him. And then. Um, for after that, then I, I lost to a Jack, but like, I've I've just been like playing so much Tekken Seven over the past eight years, right? And I, I love this game. It's it's a beautiful Tekken, and um, it's been a really special time uh, competitively and and socially. You know, like played it with so many friends. Tekken Seven, it's a great game. I'm excited for Tekken Eight too, for basically the same reasons, like. You know, Tekken 8 isn't on my list, but uh, next year I'm sure it's sure it will be. So that's Tekken. I've been playing Tekken since the 90s, and I love it dearly. It's, you know, if you know me as a person, you know, you, you I'm kind of fundamentally a Tekken player uh, in within the realm of fighting games. So let me talk about other games that are not Tekken. This is going a bit long. Let's Let's... T type of games I loved as a kid. Street Fighter 2. So I was like nine when Street Fighter 2 came out, right? And um, that's what we did, right, as kids. This is the uh, this is the arcade version. Um, I'm playing it here on the, uh, the anniversary collection, or the, yeah, the Street Fighter 30th anniversary collection. But World Warrior, right? Like, these graphics are still really beautiful. Um, it's a great game. It's a great game, and I remember it really vividly. Um, my cousin was a little bit older than me. He's still a little bit older than me. Uh, shout out to my cousin Matt. And um, I remember he took me uh, to the convenience store that he could walk to, you know, because he was like a, a, you know, older, cooler kid, and you know, he would walk to the convenience store, and they had a Street Fighter II cabinet, and um, that was the first time I ever saw it. And uh, it was, um, it's it's Street Fighter 2, right? And it's like ingrained in our, our blood, in our souls forever. You know, if you were kind of uh, a kid at that time and you were, you were into it, I mean, it's, what's more to say? It's Street Fighter 2. Um, it's a great game. But Mortal Kombat, right? So... In the early to mid '90s, I actually liked Mortal Kombat more than I liked Street Fighter. I liked Street Fighter a lot, but I loved Mortal Kombat. Right? It's Mortal Kombat. I played it on um, on the SNES. Uh, arcade cabinets, obviously, when when they were available, but the SNES port was quite good. Um, just the soundscape of this game, you know, the like, dun, 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 like the, do, 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 do. it's it's, 
I love the soundscape of Mortal Kombat One, and just like the weird like compressed effect on the um, on the announcer, it's it's incredible. Um, here we're looking at a, uh, a cabinet that was at an office that I worked in at the time. This was fantastic. This was like close to my desk. I would like go over and you know take Mortal Kombat breaks here and again. Uh, MK1 man. This was this cabinet. We got to repair this cabinet too. It was that was it's beautiful. Like you don't often get to work on arcade cabinets, or most people don't. But uh, yeah, we repaired this one a little bit. It's fantastic. Uh, MK1. I love it. I like in that five button layout. It's God. Mortal Kombat one. Um. Played a lot of Mortal Kombat 2 as well. Um, this I remember as a little, like as a, you know, tween. Um, played this mostly on the SNES. And um, this was one of the games that I remember. Um... Oh, I have one more thing to say about Mortal Kombat 1. The, the original Mortal Kombat. I remember really vividly. I got to the point where I could play the SNES version by sound. And I hooked up my SNES to a stereo with no television display. I like wired it, you know, with the RCA cables into the stereo. And uh, and I could play it just by the sound. And that was that was really funny. So Mortal Kombat 2, I remember I played this um uh, 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 with like neighborhood kids, you know, as a as a child. And um, I remember like at that point, that was like the first game where I like really vividly remember people being like a little bit unnerved at like being unable to beat me at Mortal Kombat 2. Like I could just like mess up the neighborhood kids, which was like a fantastic feeling at the time, right? Um, it's a good game, Mortal Kombat 2. This this also has a great soundscape. Um, as we got a little bit older, like my friends and I, we would play, th there was MK3 obviously, but like MK Trilogy, right? On the, um, on the PlayStation 1, we played so much of this, and I remember really vividly uh, my friend Brett. So shout out to Fluid Tunes. Brett would um, he played the Cyber Ninjas, and man, like he would do he would do like the teleport kicks and like throw bombs and like fighting games was just like what we did at the time, right? Like it like. Kids in our high school, we just, in our, in middle school, I guess this came out, like, we would have been in, like, eighth grade, maybe ninth grade, when we were playing this uh, the most, and we just played this, like, all the time, like, because we were so, such, like, cool people, right? We would, you know, play this at parties. Um, I love Mortal Kombat Trilogy so much. It's got, like, all the characters, and, like, the MK3, like era fatalities, this is a brutality here, I believe, are so stupid. And like, this is like, I think, this is my favorite era of like fatalities in Mortal Kombat. Like you punch somebody and like way too many bones fly out everywhere. Like, I think there's like several rib cages here. It's, it's inane. I love it. Um, MK Trilogy, it's a great game. Loading times take forever, but, you know, you gotta wait for uh, a good time. Okay, and Super Street Fighter 2. This is the SNES version, and this was... This particular version of Street Fighter 2 is probably the one that I love the most. And I realize this is not, like, the competitively relevant version of Street Fighter 2, but Super Street Fighter 2 on the SNES, we had a really, really interesting local meta, and a lot of people in my high school were playing this, um, you know, well past the time when it was kind of cool to be playing Super Nintendo games. Like, most of the kids had been, had, you know, moved on to PlayStation games, but we kept playing Super Street Fighter 2 um, on the SNES, and we had a at our high school, we had this like gazebo where we were allowed to set up like a Super Nintendo, and we sat in there when we had like free time, um, and we would grind out like Street Fighter matches. And I, we got like there was a there was a developed meta, um, and uh, man, we we 
we played the heck out of this game. And the, the tragedy is that it was my copy of this game that we left in the gazebo and somebody took it. And to this day, I do not have a Super Street Fighter II cartridge and I should find one. Um, but it's a great game, you know, it's Super Street Fighter 2. You can, you can, you got the new challengers, you got the, it's, you know, you got air tattoos. It's uh, Super Street Fighter 2. I played this. Um, I ordered this out of the back of the Super Street Fighter 2 manual. Um, this uh, input device um, is a fight pad that you could buy from Capcom. This is um, the Capcom Pad Soldier uh, input device. And um, I still have it. This is the one I had in high school. And um, people would be a little bit annoyed at me because when it was my turn to play, uh, you know, I had to unplug the SNES pad and plug in this pad, um, which obviously, you know, has the um, has all the attacks that you want um, on the face right here. And I love this thing so much. And this kind of echoes um, fight pads that people use nowadays because, you know, still, like, um, PlayStation pad or Xbox pad, whatever it is kind of normal controller you're using, doesn't have all six attacks on the face, so you gotta use the shoulder buttons, but not if you have, you know, a good fight pad. So shout outs to Capcom for making this thing. They knew. Um, I love this thing. Super Street Fighter 2. Um, also Killer Instinct. Oh my god. Killer Instinct. This is the SNES version that we're looking at here. We played it on the SNES, but I played it on the arcade machine so much too. I love Killer Instinct. Again, largely for the soundscape. Um, just the way the announcer yells is, it's unapologetically awesome. And I love the character designs and like uh, the music. And I, I love everything about Killer Instinct. Um, I remember really vividly the arcade machine that I played um, the arcade version of this on. It was in a laser tag place in the 90s in, um, in my hometown. And I remember, I can picture like where it was um, in the building at the laser tag place. And just the, it, you could just hear it. Like if you were anywhere close, you know, the announcer just yelling. It's, 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 man, killer instinct. It's so good. We played this so much. Very, very formative for me. And then Toshinden. Once we got like PlayStation 1s, we played a lot of this game. I love Battle Arena Toshinden. Uh, this is the first game that I played that had like sideways movement. It might have been the first game that had sideways movement, one of them. Um, so this, this came after Tekken 1, right? But Tekken 1 doesn't really have sidesteps. And Tekken 2 doesn't really have sidesteps. But Toshinden has sideways movement. Um, it's fantastic, and it's really strong in Toshinden. You know, you can like guard and then side roll and then guard and side roll. Um, and as far as I can tell, that's like, I think that's a really good strategy in the game because your side roll is actually very evasive. Um, you can avoid projectiles, you can avoid incoming attacks and whiff punish. It's kind of, the logic to it is, is very similar to Tekken, you know. Um, safe poke, move, safe poke, move. Um, it's. Toshinden, it's great. Um, another 3D game that I loved um, as a kid was Virtua Fighter 2, and one of my friends had a Saturn. Um, so Ryan, who was called Lloyd at the time, uh, shout out to Ryan. And um, for whatever reason, most people, you know, I think he was the only kid I knew who had a Saturn. But so he had like this really when we were at his his house. Um, it was like a interesting, like different um, set of games that we would play, and and one of them was Virtua Fighter Two, and um, it was beautiful. You know, it's it's um it's got those ridiculous moon jumps, and character designs are really cool, and um, I liked Leon for whatever reason. Like, it's not normally my kind of character, but I I, I liked him in Virtua Fighter Two. Um, so that was really good times. And then Bushido Blade. Oh my god, this is another PlayStation game. So 
Bushido Blade is incredibly sick. I had Bushido Blade 2. Um, I don't have my disc anymore, which is a little bit sad. Um, but Bushido Blade and Bushido Blade 2 are fantastic. And they really capture kind of the, you know, like samurai sword fight kind of a vibe. There's like kind of like wire jumps, you know, you jump like really, really far in this game. But other than that, it's like pretty realistic. Like there's no health bars in this game. So like in Toshinden, right, it's a sword fight, but you know, it's like normal health bars and you can take like quite a few hits before you go down. But in this, like one clean hit rounds over and it's like you die, right? You're not going to survive getting hit with a katana. Um, and that's Bushido Blade. It's fantastic. And it, it reloads so fast. So you can grind out, like, first of 20s, you know, quick. Um, it's it's really rich and really... It's got an interesting movement system. Um, you've got, like, different stances. You can hold your sword in different places. It's Bushido Blade is great. Man, this video... It's taken a long time. Let me tell you about games. So that's games I loved as a kid. Let me tell you about games I've loved as an adult. That's okay. It's my 41st birthday video. I'm being a little bit self-indulgent and a little bit uh, autobiographical. I'm gonna tell you about games that I've loved. Garou. So when I went to university, one of my friends was in a frat. It was the nerdiest frat that you could imagine. And they had a Neo Geo cabinet. And on their Neo Geo cabinet, one of the games they had was Guru. And we played kind of a lot of this. So I was like not in the frat, but they knew me and I would like come by and play Guru pretty often. This game rules. Um, I didn't know a whole lot about SNK or Fatal Fury at the time, but uh, this game is like obviously awesome. Uh, I like BJN personally. I think she's really charming. Um, you know, how do you not love a uh, cute pirate girl? Um, but it's got Tizok and Freeman and like and Terry. Obviously, like this game is great. It's a uh, I've never been good at it, like, as such, but, like, it's it's really fun. Um, and then, you know, when we were in university, like, we started getting PS2s, and when we'd get a PS2, you know, like, play some Soul Calibur. Soul Calibur is fantastic. Um, I played a lot of... So nowadays I'm an Ivy main um, in Calibur, but at the time I think I mostly played Heihachi, just because I love Tekken so much. Because um, we play, were playing on the PlayStation 2 version. Um, so I play a lot of Heihachi and like, man, getting parries with Heihachi is so satisfying. It's like, you got a sword? Well, clang. It's great. Uh, guard impact. Soul Calibur. And I love Soul Calibur too. Street Fighter Alpha. So this is another game I played weirdly primarily on the SNES. Um, there exists a SNES port of Street Fighter Alpha 2. And there, people have made videos about this game. Like, um, it was very, this is like a really like graphically like complex and rich game. And it's nuts that they managed to fit this on the SNES. Um, here I'm playing the arcade version, uh, hitting somebody with a demon. I, I, I think this was just the computer, but um, I have hit people with demons uh, on the arcade version of uh, of Alpha 2 as well, and it's, it's just a joy. Like, anytime you can hit a Raging Demon, it's uh, it's a joy. So shoutouts to uh, Akuma. I played this with Martin uh, a lot on the SNES, but you know, I, who doesn't love Alpha 2? Everybody loves Alpha 2. And Martin, people love Martin. Uh, when I was in graduate school, um, I played a lot of Soul Calibur V, and a lot of friends that we um, uh, that we had locally in the town where we were living at the time, um, for whatever reason, we got like really into Soul Calibur uh, Soul Calibur V, and um, 
This one, I think, is not... Like, I loved it for the social aspect of it and the people uh, that we played it with. So we played it... Um, we played it with uh, Carissa, with my friend Carissa. Um, hope she's doing well. Um, and her friend, who's... Her, my very dear friend, whose name... It'll come to me. Um, anyway, so this, like... Soul Calibur V is so much fun, and... Um, I've played this with Vice's assistant too, so shout outs to uh, shout outs to Vice. Um, so call number five, good times. I think this is not like the best regarded Soul Calibur. Like I don't, to be totally honest, I don't love the new characters, almost any of them. But it's got Ivy, and I love Ivy. Um, it has Soul of Devil Jin, and I love that you can make a Devil Jin character in Soul Calibur Five. So he's he's fun, you know. He feels a lot more like um, his Tekken uh, self than Heihachi does, but, you know, Soul Calibur V is great. Okay, uh, and I've loved Virtua Fighter V, um, particularly, this is the, um, the PS3 version of Final Showdown. I have, this is the Virtua Fighter that, you know, it's the most recent one, um, Final Showdown and Ultimate Showdown is the new PS4 release. This is the one that I've spent the most time, like, trying to learn intentionally um, in two, obviously, I was, you know, a child and I was kind of mashing. But, like, Virtua Fighter V is so deep. And I would love to, like, really learn to play this game. Um, a lot of, like, NorCal Tekken players play this as a side game. Not a lot, a lot, but a few people. So, like, at, like, a NorCal event... Somebody has will occasionally pull out Virtua Fighter, um, and you'll see uh, see the Virtua Fighter players like the old the older people will tend to like know how to play Virtua Fighter as well. Um, in this game, I've played like I played some Sarah, but I really I settled on Lao. I love Lao Chan, like he's sick. I I kind of have a Lao, like I, it's not good, but like. I sort of know what Lao does, and this this is the game I've been like most serious about in the Virtua Fighter series, which is not very serious, but love Virtua Fighter Five. Street Fighter Four. Uh, everybody loves Street Fighter Four. Um, I've never been great at it, but I love the Evil Shotos, and I love Jury. Uh, I remember real vividly when I found out, like, that there was a new Street Fighter, like, it's like, oh my god, this was in, you know, 2009, uh, or so. Maybe I started playing it in, like, 2010. Um, I was like, oh my god, there's a new Street Fighter game. And, uh, yeah. Like, I immediately liked Jury. Um, and as the game kind of, like, got a bit older, you know, I moved to the, um, you know, Evil Ryu and Akuma. I love, I love demon karate people, uh, you know, as a Kazuya player. But Street Fighter Four is really fun. Uh, it's a great game. I've loved watching it, I think, more than playing it. Like, watching high-level Street Fighter Four is, uh, is just a joy. Um, I've never been great at Street Fighter Four, but it's a good time. Cross Tekken, like if you like Street Fighter Four and you like Tekken, how could you not love Street Fighter Cross Tekken? This game I, I think is criminally underrated, and I need them to fix the Steam version. Um, yeah, Street Fighter Cross Tekken. I think the Tekken characters actually look really good in the Street Fighter Four art style. Um, I love what they did with Brian. I think he looks incredible. Um, I love how Kazuya looks, um, especially in motion in Cross Tekken. I love that he's got like all of his moves, like he can do, like hit confirm flash punches, he can do like one, one, two. In in the Street Fighter 4 engine, which is ridiculous. Um, he's got electrics, like, it's, I love the kind of like reinterpretation of Tekken stuff into Street Fighter. Um, and I love all the little character interactions, like it's, like, Man, like, this game is great. Um, I think it, you know, it kind of wasn't super well-loved competitively, but, like, I played a lot of this game uh, for funsies. Cross Tekken, it's fantastic. Um, 
Guilty Gear Exert, um, Sign particularly, um, this game is really, really fun. Uh, my sister-in-law got this for me, interestingly, like, I wouldn't have bought a Guilty Gear. I didn't really know what Guilty Gear was or what the deal was at the time, but, um, you know, she, like, introduced me to it. She was like, oh, you love fighting games. You'll probably love Guilty Gear Sign, you know, Exert. So she, like, bought me the disc for the PS3. And um, and that's how I got into Guilty Gear. Like it was a present um, from my sister-in-law, and like what a good present, right? Like that's that's fantastic. Uh, and like how could I not play Eno, right? Like like Hot Rock and Roll Witch. How do you not pick the Hot Rock and Roll Witch? Um, I love this game so much. Like Exert is great, uh, and this kind of got me on the path of playing. No, I've never been, like, great at Guilty Gear, but, like, I've played a little bit of competitive Guilty Gear, and, um, you know, what a great present. Thank you. Um, and Street Fighter V. Like, at this point, like, I was fairly competitive Tekken player when Street Fighter V came out. Um, and I love this game. Street Fighter V is fun. Like, I, I actually liked it on release. Um, I like, I liked kind of people... I think complain about kind of like the weighty feeling of it, but I like that like the impact of the hits like feels really good. Um, here I'm playing uh, Chun dressed up as Morrigan. Uh, you know you can dress up Chun as Morrigan like what's not to like? I play I mostly played Akuma in this game. Um, man, Akuma's fun. Akuma's so sick. Like, but you know I got like. Obviously, you know, not super good at this game. Um, but, like, you know, I could do, like, instant air legs and, you know, Nusimakuma frame traps and played it online, you know, a fair bit. Uh, Street Fighter V. Good times. Killer Instinct. 2013. Like, so I didn't have an Xbox when this came out. But once it came out for PC, you know, like... I've actually bought this game twice. I bought it for Steam, and then I found out that the competitive scene is mostly on um, the Windows Live version. So I actually bought this for uh, from the Windows Store as well. But like, God, this game, like Killer Instinct, the new one, I, I'm, it's fantastic. I love this game so much. And like, just for largely the same reasons that I love the old game. Um, it's the soundscape, it's the character designs, just the way the announcer yells and like the combo system is really interesting too. Like the, the whole situation with combo breakers, you can do like a counter breaker. Like if you like think that they're gonna do a combo breaker, you can do a counter breaker. Um, and the music is incredible. Like there's a whole doc, you gotta watch the documentary, um, the whole back to block documentary about this game. It's, this game is just unapologetically awesome. And the like, I don't normally love games with like a lot of like, um, you know, like nuts particle effects going all over the place, but this game has nuts particle effects and it it works in the context. It's it's just um, bombastic, and the yelling and the um, it's this game rules. Like there's and it's still it's getting patches still, which is um, wonderful. People are still playing it. Uh, play KI, right? It's it's so good. I was gonna play this at Evo um, for the online Evo, but that one got canceled. Um, which is really sad. So this would have been in the in the next section, uh, but I've I've grinded a fair bit of ranked on this one. Um, played it with friends. Like Ki just rules, right? I I play um, Shadow Jago in this game uh, for the most part because you know you got an evil you know demon karate man. How are you not going to play the demon karate man? He's got a he's got a raging demon too. It's it's so satisfying when you hit it. Uh, Ki, it's great. And then Nidhogg. Uh, Nidhogg I love. Um, this, I just aesthetically, is gorgeous, right? It's got this like super like lo-fi pixel art going on. Um, it's super violent. Like that's like pixel blood, like spilled all over the place, but it's like tasteful, right? Like the pixel guys, like they die horribly. Uh, you know, they get impaled with these little fencing foils and 
like the movement feels really good and the, just the music is incredible and um, I, I love the stage designs like you can see maybe you can I don't know if you can see it um, but like the sky like the background is like a little bit weirdly modeled and on um, some of the stages when you go outside like the sky is just going nuts like the, it's like you know clouds just like zooming by or the sky is changing colors and it's really just unsettling um, and this game is fantastic because it's so easy to kind of like understand for me this is like the best party fighting game um, if I have people over like I will try to make them play Nidhogg um, because if you can play a platformer you can play this but also you gotta play footsies you know it's it's um this game it, it just rules and like weirdly my kid loves watching this game I, I haven't gotten her to play it yet but she thinks it's so funny when spoilers when you get eaten by the great worm Nidhogg at the end um this game is I love this one like Nidhogg 2 I also have but I love the original Nidhogg much more I think the art style is better um I don't love the claymation style of Nidhogg 2 um first Nidhogg is I think the best it's it's just so it's so it's art right it's like the concept like they just did it right it's complete it doesn't need any changes it's it's perfect as it is um KOF 13 Th these are like really in like no particular order <laughs> this is kind of out of maybe I should order them better whatever it's my video um I love KOF 13 um, I like the art style. Um, it's beautiful, beautiful hand-drawn sprites. Um, just 2D, right? Like, all the little character interactions are so good. I've loved, um, I've played it for a bit of KOF, you know, 13, 14, 15. Um, this is my favorite out of them. I've never been, like, particularly good at it, but, like, it's beautiful. How do you not love this game? And the stages, I love the stages. Like they're, they're so rich and just, um, there's so much going on in the backgrounds. It's a great game, KOF 13. And Vampire Savior. Um, I got into this one, like, you know, we pull this one out a lot of times, you know, at spooky times, like right now. Um, there's obviously, you know, still like super high level competitive Vampire Savior happening. Um, so shout out to like Vampire Arcadia for for running that the fight cave people. Um, here I'm playing it on the uh, PS3 version. This was a few years ago. Um, I played a set uh, for Spooky Times with um, with Butler. So shout outs to to Dr. Butler. Uh, play you know Morrigan and Dimitri in this game. Like Vampire Savior, it's it's beautiful. You know it's it's just weird and like cartoony and kind of gross but cute at the same time like the just the like look at these animations you know he's that's his like uh you know this kick that this werewolf guy is doing like how do you not love i love the darkstalker series as a whole but uh vampire savior is just like is incredible and um i should play more of it it's one of those games that like kind of like you know killer instinct like i wish i played more of it um i kind of wish i had an extra day every day for playing fighting games, you know, like one day for, one day for be productive, one day for play Tekken, one day for play another fighting game. And this would be one of the games that I would play, uh, given arbitrary time. Um, Omen of Sorrow. I love Omen of Sorrow. This I played, I can't remember why we pulled this out. It was on sale on Steam and like we started playing this and like for a couple of weeks, my buddy, uh, Chris and I, started like really trying to like learn this game for reals and i just love the art style it's it's just they just mean it you know it's it's very um they mean it it's omen of sorrow it's it's ridiculous like look at this guy like like that's his crouch that's like you press down to get that incredible poke um some of the characters are just like just over the top over designed it's it's beautiful omen of sorrow can't recommend it enough. And Tough Love Arena, um, I'm like acquaintances uh, with Paul and Amy, um, who are the developers of Tough Love Arena. Um, he 
was a coworker of mine in some sense. We didn't like work closely together, but I, I was at the same company as him uh, while they were developing this. And um, I love that they're running this at, uh, at events. Um, this one's free to play. Art style is beautiful, right? So you can see it. Um, characters are kind of like, almost like Keith Haring style characters, but they're original designs by Amy. Um, and it's like, it's a very minimal fighting game in the sense that like, the movesets are small and there's like not that much to understand about it, but like, it's enough where you can really be playing a fighting game and um, it's great and uh, you should play it. Uh, there exists at least one arcade cabinet that I know of. Uh, it's in Brooklyn. Uh, if you happen to find yourself at, um, there's a barcade in Brooklyn called uh, um, 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 Wonderville. And Wonderville in Brooklyn has a Tough Love Arena arcade cabinet uh, that I've played and like had real interesting competitive matches with people, um, which I won, you know, because God of Fighting. Uh, on the arcade cabinet. It's Tough Love Arena is is beautiful and you should play it. It's free. Um, you know, go Google it up. Uh, you should play it today. Okay, so games I've played competitively, other than Tekken. Obviously I played a lot of Tekken competitively. We're getting to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. Uh, here's me at Evo, uh, about to lose its whole caliber. But uh, they put the camera on me, so I had to I had to emote, right? Uh, so I played a fair bit of Dead or Alive 5. Um, I played Nyotengu. I think Dead or Alive is underrated uh, as a fighting game. I think, you know, if you like Tekken or you like Virtua Fighter, like there's, what's not to like about DOA, right? Um, except for some of the character designs are kind of not great, but some of them are fantastic. Like, how do you not like Nyotengu, right? Um, her moveset is really interesting. You know, she can fly. Her flight stances are really good. Um, like, from a mechanical perspective, they're very interesting. Like, she can fly forward, she can fly backwards. Um, she says she says this line right here, like, my deception, like, rules all of creation, which is, like, a shout-out to um, something that, like, the guy from DOA2 said. He says, like, everything is my delusion, if you remember that game. Uh, Dead or Alive. Dead or Alive is really interesting, too, because um, it's got, an in, like, a mind game that you can play while you're being comboed, kind of like KI in that way. And I, th I think it doesn't get enough um, appreciation, the hold system. Like you can be getting comboed and you can like combo breaker out of it if the opponent is doing a predictable combo. Uh, it's, it's super interesting. You know, and like obviously about half the characters are not well designed, you know, they're kind of uh, pandering, you know, waifu nonsense, but like Neo Tengu. How do you not love Neo Tengu? DOA 5. Underrated. It's really a shame that Koei Tecmo keeps killing DOA. Like, they, they have had like several events where they like announce the formal end of the DOA game. <laughs> it's... And then DOA 6. I didn't like DOA 6, to be totally honest, but 5 last round. This is great. I played this competitively at um, uh, 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 the Sharkade, which was that event that I mentioned before. It was actually, the Sharkade events were run largely by DOA players. Shoutouts to Nico. Nico is a competitive DOA player and he would run DOA brackets and all the Tekken players who showed up, you know, a lot of us would like play DOA as a side game. And I, I entered like several uh, DOA brackets um, it's really fun. It's good times. So, Dead or Alive 5. Um, I played Super Turbo competitively. Uh, not well, but uh, they used to have this event at Facebook. Um, I never worked at Facebook, but Facebook would have um, this event, and it was called Hacker Fight, and they would invite people from uh, different tech companies, which I work, used to work at a big tech company, to bring their best Street Fighter players to come play Street Fighter at Facebook. And um, they had these events and I was on our, um, our Super Turbo team for the company that I was working at. And um, it was like 3v3 and uh, it was a really good time. It was, it was super fun. 
Um, and they had it on these um, on on the cabinets. They had uh, Japanese cabinets um, for Super Turbo, and it was good times. Uh, so I, I miss all those people that I uh, that I used to be on the Street Fighter team with. Obviously, you know, at the time they would run um, whatever the most current Street Fighter game was at the time, which I think was always Street Fighter Five. There might have been one that was like the tail end of Street Fighter Four um, for these hacker fight events, but um, Super Turbo. Super Turbo is so degenerate, like, it's, it's ridiculous, that game, like, there's a Majin Obama video about, uh, like, don't let people tell you that Super Turbo is a good game, like, they're not your friend, it's, it's very real, like, have you ever gotten throw looped by Boxer, like, that sucks, like, or, um, or Sim, it's, it's disgusting, it's so disgusting, Super Turbo, but it's, it's fun to play with friends. Samurai Showdown. Um, the 2019 Samurai Showdown, when this came out, this was like everybody's side game at that Evo at 2019. Um, I picked Genjiro in that game, and he turned out to be top tier in the first uh, first season, like before the first patch. Um, here's I actually, I won, I went like two and two, which is like shocking for me um, at that Evo. So, I was playing this match on stream. Um, this is on the Evo uh, YouTube channel. You can, if you really go find it, you can find my match uh, from Samurai Showdown that was streamed. And the, the commentators were making so much fun of me. It was funny. Like, uh, this, I was playing very untutored Samurai Showdown, but I had a game plan and I was doing it. And uh, and it worked, and I won this set, and I won a couple of sets, you know, in that um, uh, in that tournament run. So shoutouts to Samurai Showdown. It's really fun. I I love the art style of this. This, like, as a game where people die horribly. Um. I think Samurai Showdown does it right. Uh, it's you know like, it's it really makes you engage with the idea of like what does it mean to be fighting with swords uh it's very dangerous you know somebody's gonna get hurt badly and that's samurai showdown uh and genjiro is sick so i'm glad that this game is eventually getting rolled back so people can you know actually play it online uh i like this game a lot um so back to exerd i played this uh, I was going to tournaments for a little bit. Um, I, I have been to several of um, Pat the Flips, uh, you know, Guilty Gear events in NorCal. Um, I play Eno in this game because I play Eno in Guilty Gear. And uh, it's good times, like Rev2. Rev2 for Rev2, right? I'm glad this game got rollback. Um, it's Guilty Gear, and uh, I love Eno, so... Yeah, not much to say. Like, huge respect to um, to Patrick Miller for running the uh, the Guilty Gear events, the Exert events particularly uh, here in NorCal. Um, so that's it's it's really inspirational, you know. As a person who does like a little bit of like event organizing here and again, uh, I, I I really appreciate what he's done, um, and he runs a really um, welcoming event. So if you're in the area. Um, you know, check it out. Go play Guilds Gear. Um, as mentioned, you know, I played, uh, I've played a fair amount of Soul Calibur in my life, and six is the one that I've learned, like, most intentionally. Um, I have a slightly real Ivy, slightly, in Soul Calibur. Um, here I was playing it as a Evo side game. Uh, this is actually the most recent Evo, Evo 2023. Um, this match was on stream, and I came in second place in this match. Uh... This guy was good that I was fighting. I was this is like a real caliber player. Um, but Soul Calibur, it's really fun, right? Uh, I like six. I like six a lot. I think it's great. Um, I love I like the art. Like it's it's brighter. You know, it's like bright and colorful. I, like five is really gloomy and like dull. But I I like Soul Calibur six a lot. I think it's uh, super fun. Um, yeah, played it competitively uh, at several events. I've entered like a bunch of uh, Soul Calibur 6 brackets um, 
at Evo, like as a side game, obviously, um, and Combo Breaker, and a few events in NorCal, I've uh, entered the bracket. I'm not like a dedicated caliber player, but I, I kind of know what's going on. Um, it's so caliber, it's fun. Um, and then Strive. Um, I've entered some Strive brackets here and again. Um, I played it at EVO 2022. I didn't go 0 2. I was so happy. Uh, I won a set uh, at Strive. Um, I played you know in this game. They made her hat really big. Like, it's the new Guilty Gear, right? It's got great net code. A bunch of people are playing it. It's Guilty Gear Strive. They made Inu's hat huge. How do you not love the big hat? Guilty Gear Strive. Played this with friends a bunch too. Um, the netcode on this game is so good. I have played this uh, with my online buddy, Important Business Dinosaur, um, who has a real name. His real name is Paul. Um, but Important Business Dinosaur lives in Australia. And I played California to Australia, and you know what? It worked. Um, so that's like fantastic netcode. Like, this game is great. Uh, and you should play Guilty Gear. Strive is good. Okay, so finally, we're almost at the end. These are games I've played with my child. Like, I'm old, and I have a kid. Uh, but, you know, she humors me, and she'll she'll sit and play fighting games with me a bit. So we played a lot of Pokken. Like, I love Pokken. Uh, I am a, um, and I'm a Pikachu Libre main in Pokken. Uh, we played a fair bit of Ranked in this game. Uh... She actually asked me, it was so sweet, it was a wonderful memory. She came to me and she said, you know, can I buy something on the Switch? And I said, well, what do you want to buy? She said, I want to get the DLC characters. I want, I want more characters for Pocket. And I said, my child, you can of course get the DLC characters for Pocket. So we did. And she, she's like a training mode monster in this game. She'll like sit and just like mess with stuff. Uh, it's, it's wonderful. Like... Um, Pokken is really good. It's It's got a lot of, like, Tekken references in it, and it's got Pikachu Libre, and, like, how do you not love a Pikachu that's a Luchadora? Like, you, it's great. This game is fantastic. Um, I have, I have actually played this on the cabinet. Um, in Japan, um, there are Pokken cabinets as well, and they're also really fun. Um, this game is great. You should play Pokken. I wish, obviously it's like, you know, tied to Nintendo consoles, which is unfortunate, but um, this is one of my favorite. It's it's a really good game. Um, them's Fightin' Herds. Um, again, you know, for my kid, this was the first like DLC character that she was like really excited about. She found out that there was, um, this goat here is called Shanty. She's like a ninja pirate goat. And like, she knew that the character was coming and she was asking me, she was like, we got, when do we get Shanty, you know? So we got, we got the DLC for this game too. And it's really fun. And we, um, mostly we just set this in training mode and just like, like let it rock. Um, she gets infinite meter and she's usually the dragon. Um, Tianhuo, this dragon right here. And, um, and she like zooms around with infinite meter. Um, dragon is really fun. We're not good at it, but like we we play it. Just it's good times. It's it's fun with the kid. It's really cute art style. There's I'm glad that they're still developing this. Um, just the it's this is cool that it keeps existing, um, and I love it. It's a it's a great game. Um, Rivals of Ether. We've played this um, a fair bit. We're not good at platformers. Um, man, this is gonna be an hour long. Uh, we're not good at platformers, but the characters are really cute, and we play it. Um, it's just beautiful art style. Like, I'm glad that he, this is still getting developed, um, and they're coming up with a new one soon. Um, but I love the pixel art style on this, and I like the little raccoon guy uh, with the leaf leaves. Um, I think that's called Maple, uh, that little raccoon. All the characters are really cute. Um, Rivals of Ether. It's good. We don't love, or I don't really play a lot of platform fighters. I, mean, I, I don't know how to smash at all, but um, Rivals is real good. And then finally, Fight of Animals. We play this 
uh, my kid and I, we play it because it's cute and like the, the animals are adorable and we like Egg Dog and Crowrilla and Slendercat. Like Slendercat is so long, right? How do you not love Slendercat? Um, I like, uh, I think if I was gonna like play this seriously, I would play probably Kung Fu Dachshund. Like Kung Fu Dachshund is great, right? Uh, this game. It's Fight of Animals. It's really cute, and you should play it. And that's 41 different fighting games that I've loved. So finally, um, fighting games are wonderful. And the real fighting game is the friends we made along the way, you know? It's, it's really about the social uh, environment that you're playing it in. It's about the people that you're doing it with. Um, so if you play fighting games by yourself, um, you know, that's cool. Fighting games are wonderful, like, as a, a thing. Um, but it's about the people, really. And fighting games are a beautiful thing to do with friends and loved ones. And um, yeah. So with that, have fun. Play fighting games. Um, thanks for listening. Uh, and I'll see you around. I hope for many, many more years of, of uh, playing fighting games. So thanks. Bye.